Finally, I have a possibility to play. Where to play? We're on Porsche stand in EIR Frankfurt. But I'm not here to play, even though I would love to. But follow me, I have some spectacular car that you would like to see. If we could start with the, perhaps, well, let's face it, the hybrid Turbo S KM. And please take a look, one thing, totally black and white. All this acid green is done. It has the lightweight package you can see here, because if we open the door, you will have this spectacular Pipita inside and the carbon roof. Take a look at it, it is beautiful. Follow me, we need to continue towards. Whoa, whoa, you have to catch up, catch up, catch up. The GT4, obviously, we have already seen it at Goodwood Festival of Speed. Remember when I met Andreas Proeninger? You can watch that video where I had a spectacular time to reviewing the GT4. And uh, I must admit that, well, the noise is still up for question. I need to test it out, but have a pretty look at the yellow. I start to like yellow cars. It's beautiful. And especially with all the stitching, even though on the GT4, get rid of all this leather, make the car more focused, ladies and gentlemen. On the other hand, if we move around this car towards the spider, oof. I just arrived from, uh, Norway and I met the speedster owner and we all both agreed that the lines of the spider are so much more beautiful in comparison to the speedster but in this car please have a proper look here's where you should put the effort of the leather and have this you know it's, it's a gentleman sports car it's a it's a car for well the driver the the, the driver focused driver that wants to bring the wife or partner with it on a spectacular ride. Take a look at this beauty. Now we have to turn around because we have a newly released Macan Turbo and I think I think this will put the Macan on a different level. 400 horsepower and please have a look at the interior that we will have on this car. Whew. I must admit that the red leather in combination with the black leather in the top. I do not appreciate when it gets all red, but when we get the contrast in color together with the carbon fiber, I think this is a spectacular interior. Mm, I am so in eager to test drive this. And when you are in an exhibition like this, please take your time to really appreciate the standard models as well, because normally they are a bit more equipped and you will get a nicer touch and feel. Mm, I kind of like the Macan Turbo already and I haven't been driven it. So let's continue. Obviously we have the Panamera GTS already reviewed, but I think it is, I mean, it's an astonishing car. But for me, the first time, the base Carrera. Let's have a look at one of the most important things on this model from my perspective. Oh, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. Crowded. It's the exhaust. It is the exhaust. Because remember the 992 Carrera S that I have owned and the, 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 sports around, the sports system is ridiculous, don't even bother. And I think many of them just option out towards the design. But with the base model, I think this shape looks much better. It doesn't get the RS6 inspired oval thing. This looks so much beautiful. Gentile blue, actually quite a nice color on the base. And, uh, uh, unfortunately, we do not have the 2019 combination. I would have loved to see how that looked like. But anyway, the interior is pretty much as we are used to the 992. No differences here. Again, beautiful leather as it should be, or I believe in, in, the, in the base uh, Carrera. I would also say that in, if, you, if you're looking for a daily driver, I would prefer the base model. The base model, I think, is more a sweet spot because 450 plus horsepower, ladies and gentlemen, was a bit too much when I daily drove my 992 Carrera S. But on the other side, we do have the beautiful convertible. And 
I have recently driven the Carrera S convertible and just for your information, at 110 kilometers an hour, you don't have much turbulence at all. In fact, you can have a comfortable ride in the spectacular convertible without having, you know, the, well, actually your wife hair will still be pretty when you arrive to your destination, traveling 110 kilometers with all windows and everything down. If you raise the windows and this, you know, reflective, wind reflective shield, then you can go 185 kilometers. I tested it on a closed road in 15 minutes. Whew. I think the convertible 911 is taking a different position, at least from my perspective, than it has ever been. So pay attention and remember the 991 was, a, from my perspective, the first beautiful 911 convertible and it's taking one step more in the 992. But now to the most important of them all. You may talk about the Taycan and the 911s and everything, but this is where it happens. This is the new Porsche racing Formula E. Remember when I was in May at the Formula E, uh, Michelin hosted me and Alan McNish told us everything about the uh, Formula E. If you haven't seen that video, please do, please do. And I'm so eager to follow Porsche through the next season where we will have the possibility to write a new chapter of the Porsche racing history when they entering the Formula E. And remember, I have already been to one of the races in Paris and the action is really good. You can actually touch and feel the incidents, the struggling on position much closer than you do in other motorsports. The Taycan dominated the rest of the Porsche stand. Expected, I guess. As usual, the hospitality and the little extra Porsche goodies frames the stand. But my biggest treat was all the people I ran into. Could you tell me a bit when your heart started to, you know, go Porsche? Sure, yeah, you know, I fell in love with Porsche as a 10-year-old, so this was 42 years ago. I came to the Old Scott London Motor Show very similar to this in 1977, 42 years ago. I looked at a car like the one behind me, I had the poster on the wall, that started my love affair with Porsche, and I'm uh, even more infatuated with the cars and the brand than I ever was 42 years later. Um, we all know that you have some beautiful Porsches in your garage. If you currently, let's put in currently, because me as a Porsche owner myself, time to time you have your favorites, favorites yeah, yeah. and then you shift. Yeah, yeah, between, yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah, of course. You know, I love fish and chips, but I don't want to eat fish and chips exactly, every single day. Exactly. So I'm all about variety. Sometimes yeah. I like Indian food, sometimes I like Mexican food. Exactly. Yeah. So from that perspective, which is your... Which keys are you going to take off your, your today where if you would go for a drive in well, your garage? Let me show you something in my pocket. This one I always carry around. It's my favorite car, 277, my Hot Wheels. This car has gone around the world. But my current love affair, a couple of weeks ago, I bought a 1988 944 Turbo. Ooh. This is my new daily driver. It's in champagne gold with a chocolate brown interior. So you're right, you know, you don't want to drive the same car every day. So this is my all time favorite, but my current love affair, other than Hannah, my girlfriend. Hey, good to see you. Good, good, good. We'll catch up in a minute for sure, for sure. My current love affair in Porsche is my 1988 944 Turbo. I bought it at the Pomona Swap Meet in LA and that's my daily driver. Um, when it comes to the Porsche history, and uh, if, you, if you look back and the history you've had, wh where do you think you co connect with the new models? For you me, understand what I yeah, mean? Yeah, for me, you know, when I think of Porsche and my love affair, it started with the turbo, the iconic turbo. Mm. So when I think of Porsche, that is the car I think of. Mm. That's an old vintage car, but Porsche, you know, everything is turbocharged now, up until the moment of the electric Taycan debut, yeah. which they're also calling a turbo. Mm. So to me, when I think of Porsche, I think of turbo. That is the icon, looks fast standing still. I had the poster on the wall as a 10-year-old boy. That story is still alive today. I meet a lot of kids who fall in love with Porsche or Lamborghini or Ferrari, whatever it may be. Mm. Porsche is my drug of choice, but it all starts young with a dream and uh, I never gave up on the dream. 
Uh, if I remember your history correct, and please, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong here, but you're also into clothes, right? You're yeah, yeah, that's my background. You know, I'm a heavy metal guy, rock and roll guy, a little bit of a Viking. Skull. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, I'm into rock and roll music, ACDC, Led Zeppelin, you know, Metallica, Van Halen, yeah. bands like that. So that influenced my style, my fashion, you know, and that's basically my backstory when it comes to sex, drugs and rock and roll and Porsche cars. <laughs> Uh, I must tell you, ask you one more question because okay. I felt in love with the new car this year as well, a uh, Porsche 928 oh, from yes, 1988. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you driven those? I own four Porsches, uh, 928s, all of them from 1978. 1978 was the first year yeah. of the Porsche 928. Yeah. So I like to start my collection early with the first series yeah. of everything. So. The 928 is my favorite water-cooled transaxle car. It's the one with the most torque, the most comfortable one to drive. And ironically, when I look at the 928 and I look at all Porsches today, I see that center console is derived from the 928. Agreed. I look at the Porsche Panamera and to a certain degree the Taycan, and I just see a four-door 928. I even said to one of the Porsche guys today, when are you going to make a two-door Taycan? Yeah. And you can call it a 928 or you can call it a 911. Yeah. But the 928 to me is a special car. I love driving it and I own four early 1978, 928. So a uh, special car for sure. And I know you can relate to that. Yeah, I do. And I've been, since I was born 19, I actually bought a 944, my first ever ah, Porsche. Congratulations. So. On anyway, that. so um, if we look at our history, I'm curious to know if we jump into a brand new Porsche today, what you could buy today off the shelf what, what what would you go for i have a few favorites uh cayman gt4 mm. awesome car um obviously gt3 or gt2 rs yeah. awesome car and uh, i'm pretty excited to see the Taycan. i actually honestly think this is a future classic i think we're at the cusp of uh, a turning point in the automobile industry i think we have to move forward we don't want to become obsolete dinosaurs but as long as we can still get oil and gasoline, yeah. we can still keep driving our internal combustion cars. Yeah. And uh, the future looks bright, whether it's electrified or whether it's, you know, internal combustion. I always say when it comes to 911s, you need both air and water, i.e. lufty cooled and basically cooled. So I'm all about variety. I'm all about the driving experience. And I love to do my driving behind the wheel of any Porsche. My name is Walker. It has been a pleasure meeting you and thank you so much. Skål, and I will see all you guys somewhere in Scandinavia, hopefully at Rutskogen and somewhere like Gatterbjörn. Hey! Skål! The focus from Porsche could not be mistaken. Soul electrified. I got the first chance to view the sport design package. I'm not convinced yet, but black calipers is a must-have option. The electric charger lid is not for all models, Taycan Turbo is manual. Instrument cluster grows on me, it gets more and more beautiful, but I have already get used to the rest of the interior. Wheel design, not sure if the design department ran out of time and or money, as usual. So this is Michelin Vision. So what is it all about? Well, you know, a normal tire is produced by rubber and oil. And let's get rid of the oil particular, building up the entire tire, the entire tire with 3D printing. That's called the Michelin Vision. Moving to the Opus, and what happens is that together with General Motors, they are going live in 2024. So this is a puncture-free tire, that's what we have heard before, but we don't have any air at all. So it means comfort level that you don't have to at all check your tire pressures. Doesn't matter if you load your car with your family and luggage and everything. And perhaps most important, you don't need to change the entire uh, wheel when, 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 when it's wearied out. You just change the top surface of the tire. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is the future of Michelin. Michelin sets the prerequisites for autonomous vehicles. Or who would you think should check the tire pressure or change a tire if a puncture occurs on an autonomous vehicle? VW showing future mobility and creating electrification with a premium touch and feel without spending hundreds of thousands of dollars. The entire Volkswagen group is being electrified. Today the ID3 at EAO Frankfurt is released. And look at it, it's a beauty. So jumping into the future of electricity is not only from the Taycan perspective. No, we have now a proper, proper electric car 
for, let's say, the common people. First of all, look at the design and touch and feel. I know for sure that Porsche and Volkswagen have worked together to create this platform. The Taycan and the ID3 is the first models that both brands will introduce. Volkswagen Group are throwing tons of billions of dollars into the electric vehicles. So we are going to see a totally different area of electrification. I'm going to take a closer look at this car and I'm actually going to try to get a review of this because it's so important to understand what the entire Volkswagen Group are doing, not only for the mobility industry, but for the future of our planet. A proper race driver, Matthias Ekström from Sweden. Welcome to my channel. Thank you very much. So tell me, just short, where is your history? I grew up in Sweden, uh, Avesta in Dalarna, very small place, and uh, started uh, with go kart like anyone does. Uh, grown up in a family which have a lot of motorsport heritage, with my father driving rallycross. Then I thought rallycross was dirty, so. I like go-kart more, then it became circuit racing in Swedish touring car. Then Audi saw me, gave me the chance in DTM. I won DTM for a very long time, so I think 18... With, with a lot of the victories, I yeah, would say. Uh, I think it's 22. Yeah, it is. And um, I think 75 podiums or something. Yeah, but you also... Two championships. Exactly, I was just about to say two championships. Yeah. But you have done one thing that is miraculously. You actually started in Mumford Raceway to teach me how to drive. How was it to give instructor to amateurs like me that does not know anything about cars and handling I, I mean, I've been doing a lot of my career and uh, something because it was funny to get more driving myself, some part for sure to build a network and also to have a living. And uh, I still do some exercises. So in this coming winter, I will do some uh, extreme courses uh, in uh, lakes in Finland. Oh! So we have some. Uh, uh, still, I do some of this, but uh, I, I like to share. And yeah. uh, if I can see people develop, I get happy. So it looked like it helped on you that you got uh, at least became a car lover. After <laughs> I it. did. I did. <laughs> I'm not sure if I could call me a driver, but I love driving anyway. Yeah. We have a spectacular car behind us. Yeah. Could you say something about it? It's a Cupra E-Racer, yeah. so it's very fresh. Hardly you can touch it. It's Ooh, uh, hot. Pre pretty hot. Yeah. And um, this car actually have been uh, around for more than a year. Uh -huh. But there is, for the time being, no championship ready where you can race. Mm -hmm. So the car has been developed, and there are some regulation developed. But the championship is still in some in silence being built. But uh, there is also another car, a competitor to this one here on the exhibition. Uh -huh. But uh, I uh, think a slower one, I presume. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. But uh, you will have to wait uh, weeks or months. I don't know when the promoters uh, will agree yeah. and everything. So there is a championship. But definitely, this car is an electric touring car, rear-wheel drive, and in quality mode, it has uh, 500 kilowatts. Ooh. So it's pretty powerful. Like any touring car, you know, there is a steel cage and a steel body shell from a road car. So it's a real touring car, but then with rear wheel drive power, it gets also very entertaining to drive. Uh, exactly. So you're going to race this or? Yeah, I will uh, drive. Once everything is all set, so I will be the driver. But then also for Cupra as a brand, I will be helping them to take care of motorsport strategy questions and also be part of some other projects within the brand. So uh, it's a new challenge for me, which I really like. Matthias, it has been a pleasure meeting you and thank you so much for teaching me to drive. How do yeah, you drive? You're welcome and uh, stay tuned. Soon there will be more info. Absolutely. Eh? Thank you. Bye. Cheers. I got the chance to take a closer look to Porsche manufacture. New exclusive option is introduced like this tinted taillights, carbon fiber interior with a matte coating and finally the possibility to get rid of the silver backside of the seats. How many times have you optioned out the Porsche crest on the headrest? I'm gonna show you how it is manufactured. So I'm actually gonna well try to work as a proper Porsche manufacturer and creating some leather work. This is a miniature of the exact process and Suffenhausen went from Porsche exclusive. So this is a a machine I have to start the clock here so what we do here is we, we, we put the Porsche exclusive manufacturer well pressure down into the leather so we get you know that touch and loving feel that we really appreciate so 
first is done. And in an old-fashioned German way, we start with black, we continue with red. 20 seconds of pressure, and off we go. Here we are, ooh, perhaps I was too early on this one. You know, don't count on me when it comes to, ooh, beautiful. And finally, the white, and we have finalized the German colors. And we are done. Black, red, white. Well, beige, but pretend it's white. Ooh, hi. Hello. I'm Jan Colin, I'm a YouTuber. What's I'm your name? Caroline. Hi, Caroline. So how does it feel to being in an electric car without the roof and door? It doesn't really feel like an electric car yet. No, it doesn't, does it? So what do you think about the interior? Um, I'm not so surprised because I'm from the industry where we do this kind of <laughs> interior design and infotainment. But it looks quite ambitious. So this is old stuff for you then? Yes, actually. Yes, it's old stuff. Anyway, for me as a petrol head, this is quite new, you know. Yeah, I'm, it is new, yeah, yeah, so I'm living, I'm living, you know, uh, outside the world. But I must admit, I'm not so found with this because when I drive, I always, you know, with the Panameras and stuff, I always have to look down and see where do I put my fingers. Yeah. So to be honest, I'm not that eager with I this. I was expecting that it has haptic feedback, but it's really... Uh, it has a bit. It has a bit, but it's not feel. enough. But the problem is when I take my hand, it's not... Um, I don't feel where I am. Uh, but this is something I really love. This is, this is Porsche. And I uh, told a friend yesterday that the first time you jump into the Taycan, you feel Porsche immediately. Ooh. So uh, I think then... I have been a Porsche customer since I was 19 years old. So yes, I am a Porsche driver. So, uh, yeah. Can you identify yourself? I can. I yeah. can, actually. That's the problem. That's because cool. I jumping into the car and I was uh, quite afraid. Uh, and, uh, but the consequence was that I was extremely happy with the results. And I felt like I was home immediately. And um, if you know, have you seen the movie Back to the Future? Yes. Yeah. So if Doug would have uh, jumped into a Porsche in the future, this is what it would uh, look like. So I'm quite happy with the result, to be honest. I believe it's a good transition from the normal combustion engine to electric because the vehicle interior still looks more yeah. less, um, like a normal car. You you can you have to take small steps, you know. So, uh, but I also think that this is um, well. Well, let's face it, the combustion engine is dead. It's just old, stubborn men like myself that keeps uh, hugging the combustion engine. Well, I think there are a lot of <laughs> obstacles on the way to It is. Anyway, it has been a pleasure yes. meeting you. Nice to meet you. So uh, good luck with your business. I'm going to check out the press conference. Yep. So uh, I had a pleasure meeting in the uh, so-called Taycan interior. But I must admit that um, Porsche has done some really good job keeping the history, keeping the feeling. And to be honest, I get more Porsche feeling in the Taycan than I get in a 992. EAR Frankfurt, well, it is the future of electricity. Everything where you turn left and right, it's all about efficiency. Doesn't matter if you are the Porsche stand VW or if you talk to a race driver. One thing is for sure, even Michelin, the tires are pushing towards a sustainable society that I believe all of us needs to do. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for joining me at EIR Frankfurt and please subscribe to my channel. We can talk about, you know, score, we can talk about Rootskogen, yeah, Ikea, yeah. Porsche, whatever you want, whatever you want to talk about. Are we rolling? We are rolling, yeah. we're shooting the rehearsal. Yeah, exactly. This is what we call shoot the rehearsal. This, this will be the best bet.